Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you several crafting supplies that I picked up from Amazon that I have planned to use in projects over the next couple of months. But we are going to be using a few of them today in the crafts that I've got planned for this video. Well, there is lots of fun in store, so let's get these projects started. So before we get into our projects, we're going to go over a couple of the things that I have purchased recently from Amazon. First off are some of these tools. I've used these before in a video, but I just love them. This right here, you push it up or down to lock or unlock the blades, and these make quick work out of all of your cardboard projects. It just slices through that like nobody's business. Another tool that I have, this is a tiny, tiny little hole punch. Let me show you here. Because sometimes you need something that is much smaller than your standard sized paper punch. So I really like that teeny tiny little hole that this little punch right here makes. And my pencil sharpener, adorable. It's battery operated. It has an on and off switch here. It also comes with an extra blade. And now let's talk some fun stuff. I want to do some jewelry projects in the future. First, I have some various little charms here. Love that one. See the Eiffel Tower in there. And I've had these for a while and they're the various keys. I really like crafting with those. They look really good in shabby chic vintage projects. And this came in a set, pink rhinestones. I already have clear, but I wanted some pink. And it comes with some tweezers. And then this little gadget here is what you use to pick up your rhinestones with. It actually is a wax tip here. Pick it up from the front on the pink side and that holds it for you so then you just place it down and glue it. I think that's just fantastic. Then this is just an assortment of jump rings and the little jewelry claws and it also comes with a pair of tweezers but you can see how this would be convenient to use in jewelry crafting. These are called gourd pins. They've got a nice big bulb on the bottom and then they open at the top just like a normal safety pin but they are in all these beautiful assorted colors and that's going to be fun for some of our projects as well these are jewelry mounts here and you've got various shapes and colors here of these pendant bases and then for those bases they also come with the bevels that will go on top of your projects. So I've got some fun things in store for us in the future using these. I've got these little clamps here and they're gonna come in handy for some bracelet and also for some bookmark projects I've got planned for us. This baby here is pretty heavy because it is a metal stamping set. I think that that is going to be really fun to do some metal stamping projects. Then I've bought some Rub and Buff in European Gold, so I'm interested in seeing what this is going to look like. And then I love these. This is just beautiful torn ribbon, and this is really high quality. I was surprised at just how nice it is, and it comes in this set of three, so I just thought those were gorgeous. Then I've got some paper that looks already antiqued and aged. It's printed on both sides. It's just a really, really beautiful paper. Then I've got this collection here. It's called Dreamy, and it has all this assortment of these beautiful card stocks in some of my most used colors. Next, I've got this gorgeous stencil. I thought that was really pretty. And we are going to be using this in one of our projects today. I love this stamp set. This one is called Old Paperwork. And it just has some beautiful images on that. I was constantly buying scrapbooking paper with musical notes on it. So we're going to be using this in a project today with the beautiful little musical notes. This one 
gorgeous French fonts. How beautiful. We're going to be using this in a project today. This one also has some French font with the butterflies on it. And this is going to be gorgeous in some spring projects that I have for us as well. And then finally, we have molds. Most of these are the Redesign by Prima. You know I love my Iron Orchid Designs molds. But these are also high quality and they're readily available on Amazon. I don't even know what brand this is. So I thought these were really pretty with the assorted styles of angel wings. I just thought those were just gorgeous. These three here I've actually had for probably two years, but they're still available on Amazon. We have Madame Garland, Baroque Swirls, Butterfly in Flight, and then these are the new ones I just bought, and we're going to be using several of these in today's projects as well. This one is aviary, and it has all the birds on that. Just makes my heart go pitter-patter. Love that one. This one is royalty. So it has your gorgeous laurel wreath and crown and some bees on there. I just thought that was just stunning. This one is fragrant roses. Just beautiful. And this one is Meadow Hair. And it has the rabbits on there. I just thought that was so sweet and can't wait to use that in some upcoming spring projects as well. well. Let me get this straightened up and we'll get started with our first project. So for those of you who have been around my channel for a while, it is no surprise that I am choosing to use the bird mold first. So I will be using my large hot glue gun and I am going to fill in these areas with my hot glue to make my molds that way instead of using clay. So once your glue goes from a clear to a translucent, almost an opaque look, that's when you know that it's ready for it to come out of the mold. And you just pop that right on out. And it has all of those gorgeous little details in there. And you can see there's some excess glue around the beak. And I'm just going to take some scissors and a fingernail file. And that's going to clean those edges right up. So now you can see that just cleans up the profile of our little bird here perfectly. And I'm going to follow that same process to make a few items from our royalty mold and also our fragrant roses. While making my glue molds, I discovered that anything that had little tiny fine details like this, it was actually better to use my fine tipped hot glue gun just to be able to get into all of those details more effectively. And then all of those little details just come out really, really well using my fine tip glue gun. So I'm going to be gluing the molds to the back of these little Christmas ornaments that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. They are blank wood on the back. And then I'll just end up either painting or maybe putting some decorative paper on the back just to cover up this design. I originally was going to do everything in this folk art color patina, but I've decided I'm going to use also the Waverly in Ballet Slipper, the folk art in Summer Porch, and the Waverly in Plaster. And for this mold, you can see that it extends past the circled area, and I'm just going to take my scissors and snip off the excess, and it'll be just fine. And I have found that chalk paint sticks best to these glue molds. And once you start getting paint on there, look how gorgeous those details are. So I'm going to go off camera and paint all of my glue molds and also the bases and then we'll come back and get everything assembled. I am really pleased with our assortment of colors here. These pastels are just gorgeous. Almost looks like cotton candy. Before we begin gluing down our pieces, I actually want to add some interest to the background and we're going to use our stamps. 
Before I use them though, I'm going to take some fine grit sandpaper and just very lightly scuff the surface because that is going to help the ink adhere to that a little better. And I'm going to be using my archival ink in the color coffee. This is my absolute favorite color and I get this from Amazon as well. So I'm just going to lightly ink up my stamp and then I can hover over and see where I like it and then push it down. And that is just gorgeous. I love that. And that's going to be so cute when we put our little bird on there. I love it. I've got a little bit of ink left down here, so I'm just going to come up and stamp that area as well. And that way the whole surface is covered. And then I'm going to add just a touch of ink here and do the same thing. That is just so beautiful. I love that stamp. And I'm going to lightly ink this one. And that is just gorgeous. And add just a touch more ink. And those are just fabulous. I love that look. And I am going to go off camera and rinse these off. I don't like to have my ink dry on my stamps. Before I glue my pieces down onto the ornaments, I actually want to distress them first with a little bit of clear wax and then some dark wax. And this is totally optional. You could absolutely just go ahead and glue those pieces in there and that would just be gorgeous. For my clear wax, I'm using Annie Sloan, but whatever you have on hand will be just fine. It's always preferable to start with some clear wax if you plan to use dark wax later. That makes it easier to remove any of that excess dark wax. So I'm just going to continue applying clear wax to each of my glue molds. I let the clear wax set up for about five minutes and then I come back with a paper towel and just blot off that excess clear wax. And now I'm going to follow that up with the Chalk Teak Dark Paste Wax. And I get this on Amazon as well. And I put just a tiny, tiny bit on my brush, rub most of that off, and then come back over the top. And that just really starts to bring out those details. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love this. And you can see the difference between these two. I've added the wax here and I haven't added the wax to this one yet. And it just gives such a nice, soft, vintage look. And then when we get that glued down, that is going to just be stunning. I am going to let this set up for a few minutes and I am going to come back and wipe some of that off. But in the meantime, I'm going to follow that same process. Just putting a little on my brush, rubbing that across those details. And once you get that wax applied, those details just pop. I love this process. So I'm going to continue adding my dark wax to all of my other pieces here. And we are almost finished. I really just love the depth that that dark wax adds to these pieces. It's very subtle, but I just love that look. And then once these have set for about five minutes, I take my paper towel again and just gently dab off that excess of the dark wax as well. And now that our dark wax is dry, we can start assembling our pieces. So first I'm just going to lay out the design, how I think I want it to look. So I'm just going to add glue to my figure and come in and place that down. So there's our bird. Love it. For the roses, I want to place those like this. And then I want to put this leaf right here. And I'll place this leaf right here. And I'm going to glue the rose down first and then come back and add glue up underneath these because the glue would set up before I got all of the piece covered. Then I can just lift these up. 
and add my glue to adhere those to the surface. And now I can tuck in my leaves. And I want to get enough glue on there to hold it in place, but not so much that it just oozes out when I push it down. Oh my goodness, just stunning. So that's how I will glue this one, and I'll place that there as well. So off camera, I traced my design and cut out and applied some of this scrapbooking paper using my Mod Podge. And I just love how that turned out. I think that looks so good. Then once my Mod Podge was dry, I went back in and punched the holes through there. And I also took my ink pad and just ran it all around the edges. That way it gives that a nice aged appearance as well. Because these are extremely thin balsa wood, I was able to punch a small hole in the bottom and we're going to attach some embellishments. And I did that using an awl and a piece of foam board. I just draw an imaginary line where I want my hole to be, place it over the foam board, and I have my hole. And that way I'm not damaging the top of my table. I then come back through the hole this way just to smooth out that paper. And you wanna make sure your paper is thoroughly dry before you do this. For this one, I'm going to use one of my keys. I like that design, I think that's really pretty. And I'm gonna use one of my little gourd pens as well. This color actually matches that key really well. And it opens up just like a safety pin. And I'm going to insert that through the hole right on my key. Isn't that pretty? I like that. I may put some lace. Let me see. Yeah, I do like it with the lace. I'm going to cut some of the lace and thread that through on my little gourd pin as well. And I cut two pieces. They look to be about a foot long. They're a little over. They're about 14 inches. Fold that in half. I'm just going to thread that onto my pen. I'm going to take some of my crinkled seam binding. I love this. I get this off of Etsy and I will link her shop below for you. And I always tie my little bow first before I cut it off because I don't want to cut a piece that's too long. Then I can glue my bow right up underneath the little hole there. And you only need just a little bit of glue to tack it down. And then I'm going to come here and push my seam binding up so it makes a little hump there. And do just a small little tack of hot glue. And I'll do that to the other side. That way I can tack the tails down where I want them and they're not covering up all up our little molds here. I like it. For this one, I'm going to be using one of our little tiny round o-rings here and then this is just some costume jewelry that i took a piece off of and i'm going to attach that to the bottom so i'm going to put my o-ring in the hole there thread that on and then use my pliers to close up my little jump ring here and there we go isn't that pretty i love that then i'll use this color to make a bow for that and I'll be doing that off camera. I'll be gluing bows onto each of these as well. I think these turned out so, so pretty. So let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, I have taken a coffee can and I painted it off camera just to save some time in the video with two coats of our Waverly in the color plaster. I'm going to be using our beautiful French font again because I want to add some background to that and then we're going to be taking our stencil and painting on top of that as well. I'm still using my archival ink in the color coffee and I'm just going to lightly pat that around, place that down, and then just lightly rub over the stamp. So that gives us just a nice faint background. It doesn't stand out. That way it's not going to compete when we paint over the top of that with our stencil. I'm just going to do the same thing and go around the entire coffee can in the same fashion. I think that is just gorgeous. So pretty. 
Now this section right here doesn't have as much of that font on it. So that's actually where I'm going to put my stencil so I can paint that on the top there. So I very lightly taped my stencil down and I'm also going to be using the color seashell pink and this is just a gorgeous soft matte acrylic by Folk Art. So I'm going to get a little on my brush, dab off the excess, and then start blotting. I don't want to get close to that edge. I don't want to go past the stencil because I have seen me do it way too many times. I'm hoping when I put the tape down on the sides that I didn't shift it. I think I did. Oh no, I love it. That turned out great. So pleased with that. I love it. So while my paint is drying here, I want to make a little tag. And I love this design here, so that's the one I'm going to use. And since I've not used these yet, I'm going to take some fine grit sandpaper and just kind of scuff up the surface to give the ink something to adhere to. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this one off the backer. I'm going to use some of our new pink cardstock that is going to match that paint just so well. And again, my coffee archival ink. That is so pretty. I like that. That's just gorgeous. I'm going to cut this out, leaving a little bit of space around the design there. Then I'll use my paper trimmer to make everything straight. Then I'm going to take my corner round punch here and round off those corners. And I buy these at Hobby Lobby when they're on sale. Then I'm going to take another piece here. I want that to be a little bit of a backer. So I'm going to use some tape roll on the back of this. Center that up. And then this is like a filigree corner. That is so pretty and that just really sets that off. I think that is just gorgeous. Now I want to take some of our ribbon here. Oh, so pretty. And tie that on like that. Get my tiny punch. I'm going to take my awl and make the hole just a tiny bit bigger. And then take some really fine twine. And I want to tie that onto the side. So pretty. And then I've got various florals that I picked up from Walmart. And I'm just going to do some little floral arrangement in there. And that is just going to be so beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed all of our little shabby chic projects. Now all I need to do is style everything up and give you a closer look at how beautiful everything turned out.